Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents How Do Lizards Find Food to Eat? Read by Miranda Wilson Abstract What is your hide-and-seek strategy? Maybe you search one area at a time, look for signs of movement, or even listen to see if you can hear your friends. Wild animals use lots of different strategies when they search for food. Guatemalan beaded lizards come from a desert valley surrounded by rugged mountains. They like to eat bird and lizard eggs, as well as insects, baby birds, and small mammals. These can be hard to find. We wanted to know what strategies these lizards use when they are hunting for their next meal. We designed a maze experiment to help us figure it out. We placed food in a maze and watched how the lizards navigated the maze. We found that they were good at remembering where they'd already looked. They did best when there was a scent trail for them to follow. They did not do as well when they had to detect airborne scent from a distance. These experiments help us know more about the strategies these lizards use in the wild. Introduction. Have you ever seen a lizard or snake flick their tongue in and out? Why do you think they do that? These animals have an extra organ at the top of their mouths that help them smell. This organ is called the vomeronasal organ. When a lizard sticks out their tongue, the tip of the tongue picks up molecules from the air. When they pull their tongue back in, they press the tips of their tongue to the roof of their mouth. This special ability lets them notice a bigger range of scents than they can just with their noses. The Guatemalan beaded lizard is one of the rarest animals in the world. Only about 600 of them live in the wild. They only live in one place, the thorn scrub ecosystem of the Matagua Valley in Guatemala. They are one of the only venomous lizard species. We know some things about their diet, but not what strategy they use to find their food. What senses do they rely on most? Are they following a plan when they search? Or is it just random? That's what we wanted to find out. In this image, you can see the Guatemalan beaded lizard is named after the bead-like bumps on its skin. Each bump has a small bone inside, which makes their skin a flexible suit of armor. Here, the lizard is close to finding some food. In the image, you can see the lizard with its head pointed toward the bottom of the photo. Its tongue is out and a mouse is at the bottom of the photo. Methods. We carried out a series of maze experiments using an eight-armed maze. Our test subjects were five Guatemalan beaded lizards from Zoo Atlanta, Harvey, Sluggo, Domino, Lucky, and Spot. Each experiment involved placing one of the lizard's favorite foods, mice or raw scrambled chicken eggs, in the maze for them to find. Before we started, we spent some time observing their behavior. We watched for signs of stress, like breathing hard or scratching a lot at the walls. We let them explore the maze before the experiment started. We did three experiments. One, we placed treats at the end of all eight passages. Two, we blocked all but three passages to make a T-shape and placed treats in just one passage so that the lizards only had to choose whether to go right or left. And three, we used the same T-shaped maze as number two, but first we dragged the treat along the passage to leave a scent trail. During the experiments, we recorded the lizard's movement through the maze with a video camera. We counted how many times they flicked their tongues per second. Lizards use the tongue to deliver scent to the vomeronasal organ. That's why we use counts of tongue flicks to determine if they were using their vomeronasal organs to locate food. If they stopped looking for food for long enough, we stopped the experiment. Here in figure one, you can see we used three experimental setups. Each setup contains an eight arm maze with different locations of food. On the left, you can see experiment one where all eight arms were baited with mice and the lizard started in the middle of the maze. In the middle of the figure, you can see experiment two where there was a choice of two directions. One arm was baited with mice at varying distances or egg. In this case, the lizard starts in one of the arms and the food, in this case an egg, is placed in one of the other two arms. On the right of the figure is experiment three, where there was a choice of two directions. One arm was baited with a mouse. 
there was also a scent trail leading to the mouse. Results. Most of the lizards did all three experiments. During experiment one, Sluggo stopped looking for food and sat around for a long time. So we decided not to include him in experiments two and three. Experiment one. The question, can the lizards keep track of where they have already looked? Answer, usually. We found that the lizards sometimes revisited a spot, but they did better than they would have if they were picking directions at random. Experiment two. Question, can the lizards smell the food from a distance? Answer, surprisingly, no. Most of our test subjects did the same as they would have if they had flipped a coin. We even tried putting bigger piles of treats in the maze, and it didn't seem to make a difference. Experiment three. Question, can they follow a scent trail? Answer, it certainly helps. They didn't always get it right, but they did a lot better than a random choice. Here in figure two, you can see our Guatemalan beaded lizards were more successful at finding food when they could follow a scent trail. If the lizards were choosing the direction at random, we would expect them to find the food 50% of the time. This is marked with a dotted line. On the x-axis of the graph are the individual Guatemalan beaded lizards. From left to right, they are Domino, Spot, Harvey, and Lucky. On the y-axis is the percent of correct choices the lizards made. You can see the results without a scent trail in orange and with a scent trail in purple. Looking at the graph, what happened when the researchers added a scent trail to the maze? Discussion. We were surprised that the Guatemalan beaded lizards had a hard time following a scent without a scent trail. In the wild, they often eat things like eggs. Eggs can't walk, so they can't leave a scent trail. It might be that the lizards follow related scents, like smelling the droppings below birds' nests. They could use those as a clue to find the nest. We noticed that when they took longer to decide, they were more likely to choose correctly. We saw that they flicked their tongues more when they were in the passage with no treat at the end. As they got closer to the treats, they flicked their tongues less. This is most likely because as they moved further away from their treat, they had to put more effort into detecting its scent. Tongue flicking is a clue that the lizards are using vomeral olfaction. We combined what we learned from all three experiments. We think that these lizards use a strategy of first exploring to find scent trails, then carefully following those trails. There's a lot we still want to figure out. It's hard to measure whether an animal is sniffing the air because it isn't as obvious as tongue flicking. In the wild, there are many other scents to choose from. So, maybe the strategies the lizards use for hunting depend on the kind of foods that are nearby. Conclusion When you are facing a challenge, it can be easy to decide that it is too hard and just give up. It can help a lot to think about a strategy and patiently work through your plan. Next time that you play a game of hide-and-seek, think about what strategy you are using to find your friends. You may find that you get better and better as you try out new ideas, or, like our lizards, combine strategies. Thank you for listening to this recording. This work has been adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the Journal of Comparative Psychology, published on June 2, 2024. Research conducted by Elizabeth Hasseltine, Joseph Mendelssohn, and others from the Psychology Department at Georgia State University and the Department of Research at Zoo Atlanta in Georgia. See the full list of authors and their affiliations in the accompanying PDF. Please visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources. Hey everyone, we're a small nonprofit and all of our resources are free. So if you like what you see, please subscribe and share.